everyone! For this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a dollhouse edit of a build that you've made in The Sims 4, or 3, or 2, or 1. Whatever is calling to you. Step one, of course, is to open the file you'd like to select. You can do that with open, with file, or if you have a menu open like this, you can just go ahead and drag and drop it in. So this is a build that I did about a year ago, and I think I, I want to make it a dollhouse. I think it deserves that love. First things first is this layers menu. Layers is, are the basis of a lot of functions in Photoshop, and it's pretty powerful. Here's the menu for it. So right now, you just see the image that you dragged in, and it's labeled background. What you'll do is put your cursor over it, right click, and say duplicate layer. You can name it whatever you'd like, or leave it as is. And now you have two images that are the same that are stacked on top of each other. From here, you can go over to this menu here. I already have it selected. And it might look like this for you, this little symbol that looks like a lasso. And it's called the lasso tool. Put your mouse over it, right click, and select the poly polygonal lasso tool. From here, you can go ahead and make the border of what you want your edit to look like. So just trace the room as you see fit. If you'd like to zoom in to be very precise, you can do uh, Command Plus, or I think on a Windows machine that would be Control Plus. You can also whoop, go here is like a little zoom menu, but maybe touch that before you start your lasso tool. Go there. I'm going to actually go on the inside of this little gray fence. Oop. I'm going to zoom out because I think I can be precise from this distance. Call me a daredevil. There, 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 and then closing it off. Brilliant. From here, I can say Command C to copy it. I believe you can also do that up here. If you want to say Edit Copy, and you're also going to say Command V for Paste, which is right here, or I think Control V on a Windows machine. So this image doesn't look different because I've just copied the selection that we had and I've put it on top of those other two layers that we had. So you can see over here, this tiny little representation of what we selected. That little checkerboard pattern means it's transparent and showing these layers underneath. So if we click these eyeballs, you can see that the whole screen here is the checkerboard representation of transparency and that there's nothing showing underneath. So we can turn those back on and now select the middle layer. From here, what I'm going to do for this particular image is I'm going to make this background copy layer bigger. I'm going to blur it and that will be kind of the background for this top layer and highlighting the dollhouse feature of it. You could also, if you wanted to, add a solid color, or if you knew how to do a gradient tool, which is here, you could, for instance, go to this middle layer, hit gradient, have fun picking a, radi or a gradient and all that good stuff, and nice, you would have a beautiful image. I am going to go back with Command Z or undo. <laughs> and I'm now back to the step that we need to be to make this background blurry and bigger. Again, this middle layer is selected and you will say edit, transform, scale. You could also say tr free transform it just like kind of lets you do all these options at once, but scale is perfect. And just drag, make it bigger, as big as you want it to be. 
You can then left click and place it to be precisely center if you'd like. You don't have to, it's whatever is to your taste. And you can zoom out to get those borders back so you can make it a bit bigger. I think that that is just dandy. So I will hit enter. And now that is locked in as the size. If you wanna redo it, go back and try again. So now I'm going to make this background blurry. To do that, I will go to filter. I'm going to say blur. I'm going to choose this blur. You can, of course, have fun messing with these or even these. Or if you don't want blur, play with other styles. Why not? It's your photo and it's whatever is going to ultimately look great to you. So I'll choose this one. It's just a nice general uniform blur. This is less blurry. This is more blurry. And you can slide it about to your liking. I'll stop it right about there. I'm going to say OK. And that's a great start. But I think I would like this image, this top layer here, to pop a little bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this top layer. And I'm going to say blending options. From here, I am going to see this little box here, right here, <laughs> that says stroke and select it. I have already done the setting to make this a white border on the outside, but let me show you a little bit more about that. Oops, I accidentally added a second stroke. That is unnecessary, but it is here. So let me get rid of that. This is the stroke I just created. It's an easy toggle. You could also play with things like a drop shadow or an outer glow. That's exciting. And ooh, let's make it very like that. And you could play with this and have fun. Back to the stroke. <laughs> I'm here. And I'm going to say that I want it to be Not that thick, <laughs> I'm actually right about where it was. Um, make sure your position is set to outside, otherwise you will kind of cut into your image, unless that's what you want, your call. And you can make it a little bit more transparent by messing with the opacity slider. And if you'd like it to be a spicy fun color, go here and pick one. I'm going to stick with white and then you say, okay. So this looks like a pretty good dollhouse. At this point, you can go ahead and add more stylization to your image. You can do that with uh, just kind of the basic photo editing fun that Photoshop provides. So I'm gonna start with this top layer. I'll go to image. For instance, I like to go to levels and maybe bring out the whites a little bit more. It's a little, little bit more bright that way. This would bring the darks out more. And these are the mid-tones. I'll go with maybe that. And then I'm also personally very fond of brightly colored things. So I'm going to add some saturation. You can do that in the vibrance menu or the hue saturation menu. A little bit more vibrant, a little bit more saturated. Little less vibrant, little less saturated. <laughs> and I'm also just going to add a little bit of brightness and a little bit of contrast. Nice. From there, I'm going to go to this background copy and I'm going to, for my own style, brighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go here and actually tone down the saturation a bit. And this is all to your liking. I mean, I know that my things tend to lean warm because warmth makes me really happy. So I'll stick with right about there. And this could be a complete dollhouse. If you wanted to crop it, I, you could do that right here. It's this tool. And you could set an aspect ratio if you had one in mind. Instagram is a very great place for squares, as you may know. Um, I'm going to do eight by 10. It's one that I quite like. 
So now you can see it's done the automatic vertical crop. You can go here to switch it. I'll make it a little bit bigger, like that. Oops. That looks about centered to me, so I will hit enter. Maybe crop it a little bit more. Oops. Yeah. The last thing that I would maybe recommend doing if it's up your alley is I like to add my name just because so many accounts on Instagram or other social media platforms nowadays may take your image and not credit you or if they want to Photoshop your name out of it, it's a little bit more work for them. So you would do that by saying the horizontal type tool. It's right here. Now that it's ooh, clicked, you can click right where you'd like to. <laughs> There's such a discrepancy in how massive my cursor is and how tiny that type is. So let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, now that you're here, Get rid of that lorem ipsum, put in your name if you desire. I'm going to say Essie Sims Yay, which is my Insta handle. I'll make it white and then I will make it, see how 48 looks. I think that's a little bit too big. Let me go to 36. Let's meet the difference at, I don't know, 40. Yeah, I think that's a good size. You can use this tool to move anything around. So the top layer, the bottom layer, <laughs> but for now, just the text. I'll put it right there. Or no, let me put it right here and let me be fancy about it, sort of. I'm going to put it here and I wanna actually make it run along this. So I would click on it, I'm still on the layer, edit, transform, rotate. Now you have this little cursor that comes up. You can just go like that. You hit enter. Oh, how sweet. Just fits right in there. <laughs> if you wanted to make it a little bit more straight, which I'm actually going to, just go back and slightly fix it. Nice. Uh, you can also go ahead and back in this text menu, which you can get to by double clicking. Keep the color, but I will change the font to something more spicy. I don't have the font I usually use, so let me go with... Let's go with this cutie. And as you can see, it got a little bit bigger, so I'll just tone it down to maybe 36. Great! And here you have a complete Photoshop dollhouse of a build. I hope that this serves you well. Go forth and edit with great power.